Grace and peace to you in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So glad to see all of you here this morning, and welcome to those who are worshiping with us online as well. If you will, please take a moment to sign the pew pads. Make sure that we can know that you have been with us. And if you've not done so and you're on Facebook, do a check-in. Right now we only have, we have less than a thousand check-ins in our entire history of Facebook existence. This is, this is not good. So check in on Facebook and then kindly put your phone back away. Uh, name badges, uh, please, when you go down, we have fellowship today, please put on your name badge. This is not only helpful for all of our friends, but it's really helpful for me as I'm still learning names. So please do that. Uh, a couple of other announcements. Uh, the office will be closed on Tuesday from 9.30 to noon. Uh, Karen and I will be doing a training off-site. And we have three opportunities coming up for casual conversation. Uh, two coffees with the pastor uh, this coming Thursday and the following Thursday at 10 a.m. And then a pints with the pastor at McGlynn's Pub on Tuesday the 24th. There's no agenda. The idea is just come. Let's get together. Let's have coffee. Let's chat and uh, spend some time together as a church family. Uh, also, I am so excited that the Book of Joy signups have gone so well that we are offering two times now. We have a Monday night at 7 and a Tuesday morning at 11, and that's for four weeks. It starts not this week, but the following week. Um, and I actually ended up with two extra books so if you want to sign up and you do not have a book, I have two books available that I would love to share with you. Um, we're going to have a wonderful time with that. And for those um, who have already signed up, I sent a message to you. I need you to respond so I know which group you're a part of and whether you'll be joining us live or on Zoom. So uh, we would appreciate a response to that. And you'll want to read up to page 80 to know where we are for the first week. If there are no other, are there any other announcements? If not, we're going to have a brief congregational meeting. Uh, Madam Clerk, have a we have a quorum. Let us pray. Gracious God, sit with us as we tend to this worshipful work of this your church. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. The purpose of this brief meeting is to elect one elder, class of 2025. And uh, that was a slot that had not been filled the last time the congregation met. And I have record that the nominating committee presents before the congregation Elder Class of 2025, Cindy Takis. As required by Book of Order, I also open the floor for nominations. Hearing no nominations, I will consider that nominations are closed. This comes from the, the nominating committee, so it does not need a second. Is there any discussion? In other words, are you going to sign up to do it? <laughs> Hearing none, I will say that we are ready to vote. All in favor of electing Cindy Takis to the elder class of 2025, say amen. amen. Opposed? Motion carries. This ends the business of this meeting. A motion to adjourn the meeting? And a second? Very good. Let us pray. Oh Lord, thank you for the many ways that we tend to the work of your church. We pray a blessing upon Cindy and all those who will be serving in this new year. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Let's prepare our hearts and minds as we worship God today on Baptism of the Lord Sunday.
Good morning. <clears throat> Please join me in the call to worship. In the beginning, at creation, please stand. In the beginning, at creation, the spirit hovered over the waters of the deep. In the waters of the flood, God placed the earth and humankind. God caused the waters to part so that Israel could cross from slavery to liberation. God formed Jesus in the waters of Mary's womb. Jesus taught us how to live by washing his disciples' feet in water. Drinking water from the well, Jesus met a Samaritan woman, the first person to recognize that he was Christ. Today, we celebrate the baptism of Jesus, the Christ. God meant for Jesus to be the firstborn in a large family. Praise be. And now join me in the opening prayer. God of life and new life, you are splendid and strong. Your voice thunders above the sound of loud waters. You sit enthroned above the floods of life. As Jesus heard you speak to him in his baptism, may we also hear you calling us your beloved. Through Jesus Christ, your son, our brother. Amen. You may be seated. Now listen to the call to confession. Let us be bold and confess our sins, for God is gracious and always ready to forgive. Amen. Will you join me in the prayer of confession? God, you show no partiality, yet we are not always as tolerant and accepting. Forgive our intolerance and help us to see as you see, that we may be found acceptable in your sight through Jesus Christ, our
Hear the good news. God forgives all our sins and promises to bring us to everlasting life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. Will you greet one another with the peace of Christ? Peace to you. As we make our way back to sitting, I'm going to invite our children to come forward and join me at the table today. Y'all want to come up? We're getting there. Hey, we're fine. I'm not used to having a mermaid in our midst, so we will take our time. How are you all today? Are you good? What do you, what's in there? It's a bowl. Huh. Well, today we're going to talk about baptism. And I've got the table here, and the table is very full. So can I show you a couple things? So when we come here, this is a table, like our family table, right? What do you do at your family table? At your table? You eat food. And we're going to come together today to eat food. And it's a very simple thing, bread. And there's juice over here that we have for communion, right? And also we have on our table this. What is this? It's a candle. And this is our Christ candle. It was in the center of our Advent wreath that sat over there. We had three purple candles and a pink candle. And then this candle was in the center. And we are introducing this to the whole congregation today to bring the light of Christ into our midst at the beginning of our worship to remind us why we're here. And we take this light back out with us. Because Jesus told us, you are the light of the world. So we have to go out and shine our lights, right? You've heard the song, this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Yeah, this is, this, this is the shining. Over here, what is this? What's in here? It's water. We use water for baptism. And I thought you all might want to help me with this today. We're going to pour the water into here. And we're going to, in a little bit, remember our baptisms. You want to help? You want to pour some? Yeah? You see that bowl in there? It's okay, it's water, it's supposed to be messy. Yeah, you wanna pour some? Yeah, can you see it? Here, let me pull up here. Yeah, so our children are helping us as we, in a few minutes, remember our baptisms. And Karen, and you, you wanna pour some water too? We're, we're all pouring the water. And what were you whispering? You were baptized here. Isn't that wonderful? You were baptized right here. And what does baptism really mean? Can I make it simple? Baptism means that you are a child of God and that we are all children of God and we come to these waters and even Jesus was baptized. 
And we do this together. And today we're going to remember it because we hear the story about when Jesus was baptized. But there was so much going on at our family table today, I thought we should talk about it. So now you know, we're going to have, we're going to have food, and we have light, and we're going to remember our baptisms. So since you were baptized, would you like to touch the water? And when we remember our baptism, we touch the water, and we touch it to our forehead to remember that we are God's own. You want to touch the water? Yeah. You want to touch the water? You don't want to touch the water. You do not have to. And I'm going to pour the rest of this. And I'm going to invite you all to pray with me. Will you pray with me? Pray with us too. Loving God. Loving God. Thank you for your family table. Thank you for your family table. Thank you for being the light of the world. Thank you for being the light of the world. And thank you for claiming us in baptism. And thank you for claiming us in baptism. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. I'm so glad that you all were here. Isn't it wonderful to see children in our midst? Yes.
Will you join me in the prayer for illumination? Still speaking, God, as these words from scripture are read, may it be to us as if the heavens are opening and we see your spirit descending on us like a dove, revealing your love for us as your daughters and sons. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from Isaiah 42, verses 1 through 9. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen, in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry out or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice on the earth. And the, co and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things I now declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Hear the gospel reading appointed for this Baptism of the Lord Sunday from Matthew 3. Then Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then John consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw God's Spirit descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from the heavens said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. Though the grass may wither and the flowers may fade, the word of God endures forever. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. Pray with me. Holy Lord, speak now your word to us in ways that we can truly hear you and understand you and be changed by you. And somehow, Lord, make my words your words. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This is my son, my beloved, with whom I am well pleased. I don't know about you, but every time I hear the voice of God in Scripture, it is James Earl Jones. <laughs> every time this happens, I hear that voice on this baptism of the Lord Sunday when we hear this beautiful passage of Jesus coming to John to be baptized. And John is not about this. John is terribly confused. John came to pave the way for the Christ, to prepare the way. And now Jesus is coming to John asking for baptism. Jesus very quickly points to the prophecy, we must do this to fulfill all righteousness. Today we remember Jesus' baptism, and we remember our own, and we consider what baptism means to us. I wonder, do you remember your baptism? Now, some of us were baptized as infants and others as adults, so sometimes it's hard to remember when I was an infant, right? 
Maybe the better question is, what difference has your baptism made in your life this week? Hmm. Baptism is a sign of God's covenant with us. It's a sacrament. We here in the Presbyterian Church, as with most Protestants, we have two sacraments. And today, we remember our baptism, one sacrament, and we feast at the table, the other sacrament. In sacraments, we, we use these ordinary things, water, bread, juice, or wine, ordinary things to communicate an extraordinary love of God. Baptism is one of those signs of God's extraordinary love for us, a covenant that God made with us, a covenant that throughout Scripture we humans kept messing up. But once and for all, a new covenant was made in Jesus, and we come to be baptized and marked as God's own. Baptism has several biblical and theological meanings. It, it's a dying and rising with Christ, and that's the reason that many people do immersion. They're dying and rising with Christ. In some of the ancient uh, churches, baptismal fonts that you stepped down into, a baptismal pool, had three steps. You went down three steps and you were baptized and you came back up three steps, signifying, of course, the three days between Jesus' death and Jesus' resurrection. And we are joined with Jesus. We die to ourselves and we live in the Lord. Baptism also is for pardon, for cleansing, for renewal. What can wash away our sins, right? We would sing. It's also about the gift of the Holy Spirit, just as the Spirit alighted on Jesus. I don't know about you, but I, I, I don't know if I've been alighted up before. But the Spirit alighted on Jesus. So the Spirit is present in our baptism. It's incorporation into the body of Christ. In baptism, we join the church. And this isn't like any other organization where we join to get privileges. No, we join to get responsibilities. We join because we are enlisting in the service of Christ in our baptism. And baptism, lastly, is a sign of the realm of God. No matter what may be going on in our world, no matter what may be going on in our personal worlds, when we come to the waters of baptism, we get a glimpse of a heavenly kingdom. When we remember our baptism, we remember our place in that body of Christ where we are to be about bringing in the kingdom of heaven along with Jesus. Baptism reminds us most of all that God loves us and that God claims us. And God calls us. We sometimes miss the last part. We, we like to be loved. We like to be claimed. But the call portion of that goes into it in such a way that sometimes we get uncomfortable. The Book of Order says that baptism is the foundation for all Christian commitment. And on the baptism of the Lord Sunday, when we consider Jesus' commitment, we look at our own commitment and we wonder, are we that committed it's a call to the Christian life. It's a call to Christian service as part of a committed community. We do not do this on our own as individuals, but rather together as the body of Christ. As the people of the Presbyterian Church of Dover, here in this place, we are called to live out our baptism vows. United with Christ. United with one another. Today we take a look in the mirror. What is baptism to us? When is the last time we've thought about our baptism and what it means? So many people see baptism as something, merely something that we do, when in fact baptism defines who we are. We are gods. Baptism doesn't mean we've reached the pinnacle of our faith. It doesn't mean that it's all easy breezy from here on out. No, baptism is not the end but a beginning. We come before God in the congregation and we make a holy promise. A promise before God and the people gathered. A covenant. It defines who we are, who we are becoming, and what it is we're to be about in our lives. That's that call part that sometimes we don't want to tend to. Baptism should make a difference. You know, some of our Christian friends like to talk about when they had a moment of salvation. When were you saved, 
our Baptist friends might say. And I think the bigger question for us is not when we came to faith first, but when we came to faith last. When's the last time you remembered your baptism and your commitment to faith? If baptism does not impact how we live, then we've missed what baptism is. Baptism is where the Christian journey begins. And every time we come to the font, whether it is to celebrate someone else's baptism where we cheer them on, or when we come to the font to remember our baptism, we recommit to the claim and the call of Christ. Baptism, though, it is deeply personal. It is not private. We come to celebrate together. It's not a me and Jesus scenario. It's a we and Jesus scenario. Baptism offers us a gift of community. I don't know about you, but there have been points in my life where I've had to rely upon the community of faith to get me through troubled waters. I've had to rely upon my siblings in Christ to lift me up when I've been down. Have you been there? And we will say, what would, what, what would we do without our church family? What would we do without the people we journey with in our faith week after week? I've been doing some reading. I, I'm an avid reader, and I'm reading this book right now uh, called The Little Book of Huga, and it's spelled H-Y-Y-G-E. It's a Danish word. We might say something like, hominess or coziness. And huga means that we light the candles in the evening and we have our cup of tea. That feeling of warmth when family is around. Huga, it, huga is especially present around Christmas time. Or maybe it's that we're stuck inside and we're reading our book and have our cup of coffee and it's a snowstorm and there's a feeling of warmth and coziness. But what makes it even more special for the Danes is that it's done together. You can do huga on your own, but it's not the same. It's no wonder that our Danish friends are the happiest people on the planet over and over when surveyed. Why? Because they have a committed community. I was listening to an NPR story this week that in the United States, we have reached a new record low of the amount of friends we have and the amount of time that we spend with others. COVID has impacted that. Our reliance upon technology has impacted that. Our independent spirit where we are right and no one can tell us any different has impacted that. We are no longer relying upon one another as once we did. And guess what? We are not the happiest people on earth. I think that this ties into our understanding of baptism. You see, when we come to the font, we come together. We come hand in hand. You heard the choir sing, let's go down, let us go down. And we go down together and we remember who we are as individuals in Christ. And we remember who we are as the body of Christ gathered together as the Presbyterian Church of Dover. We come together as a community. And you hear the word unity right in that. This year, I think it's going to be paramount for our success, for our mission in our community. For us to remember that we are a committed community together. We may go out as individual ambassadors of Christ. We may go out to do the work of the church on our own or in pairs. But at the end of the day, we are a body of Christ together. And today we come to the family table. We see the light of Christ we feast on ordinary gifts showing us an extraordinary love and we will remember our baptisms. As you come to this table today, as you come to the font, come as part of a family offering all that you are to Christ and knowing that Christ can transform all that we are and all that we have for the upbuilding of a holy kingdom. Yes, even now. Praise be to God. Hallelujah. Amen.
Will you join me, will you stand and join me in the affirmation of faith in the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he arose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. I decided not to print the liturgy for baptismal remembrance in the bulletin this time because I'm going to invite us to listen deeply. There will be questions that I will ask of you, three particularly, and I will lead you in the answer, except one I'm going to give you the answer now so that you're prepared to answer with your heart. Who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Let's pause quietly as we prepare to remember our baptisms together. Beloved people of God, our baptism is the sign and seal of our cleansing from sin and our being grafted into Christ. Through the birth, life, death, and resurrection of Christ, the power of sin was broken and God's kingdom entered our world. Through our baptism, we were made citizens of God's kingdom and freed from the bondage of sin. Let us celebrate that freedom and redemption through the renewal of the promises made at our baptism. I ask you, therefore, once again, to reject sin, to profess your faith in Christ Jesus, our Lord, and to confess the faith of the church, the faith into which we were baptized. Trusting in the gracious mercy of God, friends, siblings, Do you turn from the ways of sin and renounce evil and its power in the world? If so, say, I do. I do. Who is your Lord and Savior? Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Will you be Christ's faithful disciples, obeying his words and showing his love? If so, say, I will with God's help. I will with God's help. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Glory to you, O God. Your voice is over the waters, full of power and majesty. Your word shakes the wilderness and blesses us with peace. We give you thanks and praise for the new thing you have done in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Baptized by John in the Jordan, you anointed him with your Holy Spirit and claimed him as your beloved Son. We give you thanks and praise that by the grace of our baptism... You have claimed us as well and poured out the gifts of your Spirit so that we might be dead to sin and alive to you in Christ Jesus. Continue to pour out your Spirit upon us. Empower us to love and serve you and live as your faithful people, bearing witness to the good news of Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And God's people say, Amen. As we continue in our worship, we will come to the font as part of coming to the table. At this point, I'm going to invite the ushers to come forward. As I mentioned last week, we are bringing the offertory back, the music of the offertory. It's not simply music for traveling the plates, but music for us as we consider giving our all to God. As the ushers come forward, you may have placed your gifts in the plate, but if you have a gift to place, simply raise your hand and an usher will be by with the plate. Let us 
consider how we give ourselves to God as we prepare to come to this table. You may be seated. Friends, as we come to the table, our family table, there's always room for more. This is not our table. This is not a Presbyterian table. This is the table of our Lord. All who are hungry, all who are thirsty are welcome here. Let us sing. Are you going... You're going to move to the piano, aren't you? Yes. Yes. The piece that we're singing is a, a sort of repetitive piece, and the text changes. And I think that the text in your hymnal is actually right below. Um, so we will lead us, uh, we will lead you in making sure we get the right words for this.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right. And our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise, O God of mercy and might. In your wisdom, you made all things and sustained them by your power. You have called forth people in every age to be your servants and speak your word. When we rebelled against your call and turned from your ways in your love, you called us back to you. You delivered us from captivity and made covenant to be our sovereign God. You sent prophets to call us to justice and compassion. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with the choirs of heaven and with all the faithful of every time and place who forever sing to the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in your name. Hosanna in the highest. You are holy, O God of majesty, and blessed is Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, in whom you have revealed yourself, our light and our salvation. Baptized in Jordan's waters, Jesus took his place with sinners, and your voice proclaimed him your beloved. Your Spirit anointed him to bring good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives, to restore sight to the blind to free the oppressed. He lived among us in power and grace, touching broken lives with healing peace. By the baptism of His suffering, death, and resurrection, You gave birth to Your church and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. We give You thanks that on that night of His arrest, Jesus took bread and after having given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Remembering your gracious acts in Jesus Christ, we take from your creation this bread and this fruit of the vine and joyfully celebrate his dying and rising as we await the day of his coming. With thanksgiving, we offer our very selves to you to be a living and holy sacrifice dedicated to your service as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Gracious God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts of bread and fruit of the vine that the bread we break and the cup we bless may be the communion of the body and blood of Christ. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ that we may be one with all who share this feast, united in ministry in every place. As this bread is Christ's body for us, send us out to be the body of Christ in the world. As we turn our hearts to praying for others, Almighty God, we pause for a moment of silent prayer. We pray for those locked in circumstances beyond their control, restrained by oppressors and seeing no end to their captivity. May they discover hope buried in deepest suffering through Jesus Christ who shared the weakness and despair of human life, yet gave even death a new outcome and brought resurrection from a closed tomb. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the church set in the world to show how people belong together and how your gifts are given to be shared. Grant that as we feel for the rejection and voicelessness of others, we may meet Christ in them and bear witness to his transforming love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the communities in which we live and work 
for people under stress and unable to deal with their difficulties. For those who seek comfort in ways which bring no help. For all who are fearful. Give us grace to show by our concern and actions how each is loved and valued by you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And now, siblings in Christ, give voice to your prayers. Who is on your heart and minds today? For Joe? For Evie. For friends and family gathered back home in West Virginia, celebrating the life of my dear friend Mike. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those now hidden from us, but at home with you, O Lord. We give thanks especially for those who have strengthened our weak faith, built up our trust in you, and by their lives have drawn us into the life of Christ, who died in weakness and reigns in glory. O God, as you once claimed us in the Spirit's waters and number us among your own beloved, give us power to do your work, to show your love, and to live holy and joyful lives. Keep us faithful in your service until Christ comes in final victory, and we shall feast with all your saints in the joy of your eternal realm, through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, All honor and glory are yours, almighty God, now and forever. And now hear us as we pray the prayer you taught your disciples, using whichever words and in whichever language suits our hearts. Our Father, who art in heaven. forever. Amen. Behold, the body of Christ broken for us. Behold, the blood of Christ shed for us. I will invite the servers to come forward. Today, friends, as you come forward, you're going to come through the center aisle. I'm going to invite you to touch the water and remember your baptism. And I'm going to give you a shell. A seashell is an ancient symbol of baptism. And on this shell is a word. I invite you to use this as a prayer word throughout the year. A word that affects your individual walk as you remember your baptism, but also a word that will impact our committed community here and our community beyond these walls. And you're going to have opportunities throughout the year to reflect on your shell word, to give some feedback about how it's going, to tell us how you really feel about the word that picked you, and together we will grow as a community of faith. The feast is prepared. Come, touch the water, receive your shell word, feast. And as you receive your elements, again, we're doing this a little differently. Take and receive, eat and drink as you receive it. This is a much more friendly way for our friends who may have mobility troubles or be uncomfortable carrying something in each hand back to a pew. The feast is prepared. Come. 
dying. And yet I'll have you all serve. And I'm going to give you two baskets. That's the gluten free. Should you need a gluten free wafer, they're on this side, on the organ side. Gary, if you all could scoot that way, it'll help with the crowd. Scoot, scoot to the outside. If you all will scoot to the outside, it'll help with the flow a little bit. Touch the water. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Yes. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Amen. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism. Remember your baptism. Remember your baptism. Remember your baptism and be thankful. 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 Lucy, remember your baptism and be thankful. Pat, remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism and be thankful, Judy. Tom, remember your baptism and be thankful. What is your name? Jesse. Jesse, remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism and be thankful, Peggy. Matthew, remember your baptism and be thankful. 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 Armando, remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism and be thankful, Carrie. Nancy, remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism and be thankful, Dave. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Thank you. Remember your baptism and be thankful. 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 Be 
sure to touch the water before you leave today. Remember your baptism and be thankful. 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 Mark, remember your baptism and be thankful. Steve, remember your baptism and be thankful. Bill, remember your baptism and be thankful. Be sure to touch the water as you leave today. baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism and be thankful. east and west, from north and south, you have gathered us at your table, called us your beloved, and fed us from your body. Transform us to be your body in the world, and fortify us by your Spirit, so that we may serve you and our neighbors with great joy. Amen.
as you go from this place. Go remembering your baptism and remember that it makes a difference. I believe that if we remember our baptismal covenant, our church will be revitalized and our world will be changed. Go with the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit resting in you and giving you abundant joy for all your journeys. And God's people said, Amen. Friends, don't forget we have fellowship downstairs. Join us for fellowship.